Hey, what's up everybody? Today, I wanna dive deeper into walking bass lines. How do we make great walking bass lines that swing really hard, take us from one chord to the next, and ensure that we're creating a strong foundation if we're accompanying someone else, or even if we're just accompanying our own right hand. So, let's jump right into making bass lines here. So guys, step number one is, we wanna make sure that strong notes land on strong beats. Now, when I say strong notes, I am referring to the notes that define a chord. Generally speaking, that is the three and seven. But in this case, the single most important note we're gonna worry about to start out is just gonna be the one, the root. That's because we can rely on our right hand to define the rest of the chord when we're walking a left hand bass line. So what you'll notice is that when I play a bass line, the one, almost always lands when the chord changes. So let me walk a bass line over a C blues just to show you what I mean. And whenever the one lands on the chord change, I'm gonna just say one. One, 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 five, five, one, 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 So in order to have a good bass line with good voice leading, there were a couple times where we landed on another note. In this case, it was the five. But the point is we can sometimes land on a five and three, but most importantly, we are the root. We are the foundation with our bass line. So we're defining what that chord is gonna sound like when it's played in the right hand. All right, number two, of course, yes, is voice leading. We're not just jumping around. Could do that, but it sounds a bit ridiculous, right? It's not how we do a good walking bass line. So what we're doing is we're leading from one root to the next root, and we want to put some notes in the middle, of course. So let's take just getting from the C to the F. So what we want to happen is we want the note before we land on the root to lead into it. So when we do this note is begging to resolve to F, our next chord. Now we could also do something more open. We could go above the F first. This note is also begging to resolve to the F. Now here's an example of something that would sound bad is if we accidentally do the F before we land on one, before we get to that chord. So check out how this sounds. Where do we go from there if we accidentally put the F in the last bar? In other words, we need to be planning, and this takes practice, but we plan our bass lines so that we land one on one or whenever the chord changes. And we can get to each one with good voice leading. So I suggest, especially as you're starting out, there's no reason to get too crazy. There's no reason to be jumping all over the place and trying crazy things. No, just work on small little melodic groupings of notes with good voice leading that lead from one chord to the next. Now I wanna get a little bit more advanced here and talk about some other elements. I wanna show you some awesome baseline embellishments that we can do to actually make things swing harder. You may have even noticed me doing some in the example that started off this video. Number one, a double skip. So the rhythm is one, two, three, four. Okay, number two is gonna be actually landing on a note on the and of four. Doing so actually emphasizes the swing just a little bit. Check this out. So I'm throwing in a double skip there with the and of four beat landing. Number three is gonna be the same rhythm as our double skip, but it's gonna be an octave jump version. So instead of we're going to do it. 
cool. Next up, we've got a really classic baseline embellishment. What we're doing is a triplet triad outline. Usually it's descending. So it looks something like this. If it were minor, you could just make that minor. So next up, with our octave jump, I want to show you a variation. In the first one, we would go up to where we landed and stay there. Or down. In this one, what we're going to do is... So we're just throwing in that octave as an embellishment, but we're continuing our bass line. Alright everybody, I hope that was really useful. As always, I try to break things down into these little elements that can help you improve really quickly and make your playing sound authentic and effective. As always, be sure to subscribe and click the little bell for notifications. I'm rolling out videos weekly, so stay tuned. Also, if you want free PDFs of exercises that are going to be super helpful for you, be sure to sign up for my mailing list. It's jazzpianoconcepts.com slash subscribe. Thanks so much for watching, guys.